I warmly welcome you from near and far to this Cathedral Church of St. Michael and All Angels in Kelowna for this annual service of the commemoration of the Battle of the Atlantic. The Battle of the Atlantic began on September the 3rd, 1939, and it ended with VE Day on May 8th, 1945. The battle over the years was very costly to Canada. Merchant ship losts, losses totaled over 70, and 24 Canadian warships were lost. Fatal casualties in the Merchant Navy amounted to over 1,700, in the Navy to over 2,000, and in the Air Force to more than 900. Canadian ships and personnel and the naval and air forces used for the defense of shipping may well have made the most important of all Canadian contributions in the Second World War. The Battle of the Atlantic is an important element in our country's history, and on this day we remember. As we begin, I want to thank the Reverend Dick Fletcher, the Reverend David Rittersgaard, the Most Reverend Lynn McNaughton, Lieutenant Andrew Kerr, Secretary Lloyd Johnson, and the cadets of the Royal Canadian Sea Cadet Corps Grenville for their participation and their leadership today. A special thanks goes to Mr. Andrew Fraser, Director of Music here at St. Michael's, for his time in preparing for this live stream service and to members of the Cathedral Choir. Today is also the Reverend Dick Fletcher's 95th birthday, and we all join in wishing him a very happy celebration. God bless you, Dick. Our commemoration today begins with an address by Commodore Jose Kurtz of the Royal Canadian Navy. Hello, and thank you for including me in your virtual Battle of the Atlantic ceremony this year. I'm Commodore Jose Kurtz, Commander of Cadets and Junior Canadian Rangers. I wanted to take a few minutes today first to highlight the importance of the Battle of the Atlantic in Canada's history, and also to thank Reverend Dick Fletcher for his unwavering commitment to organizing this ceremony since 1967 and for keeping naval tradition alive in Kelowna. Reverend Fletcher, in your dedication to this ceremony, you've done great service in helping raising awareness of our rich naval heritage with the people of Kelowna. As a past commanding officer of RCSCC Granville, you've also played an important role in developing the youth of your community. So on behalf of the Royal Canadian Navy and the Canadian Cadet Organizations, I'm here to say thank you. Your work over the past 50 plus years has helped your community remember that Canada's navies flourished during the Battle of the Atlantic, playing a key role in defending supply routes and holding back the onslaught of enemy ships. The Battle of the Atlantic is not a single event, it spans the entirety of the Navy's efforts during the Second World War. Unlike land-based battles such as Vimy Ridge, where the resting place of those who were lost is now commemorated on the battlefields upon which they died, the casualties of the Battle of the Atlantic do not have that same final resting place. The men and women that were lost at sea have no sacred ground for their families to visit and to perpetuate their memories, and so these commemorative events are extremely important to the ever-decreasing numbers of survivors, their families, and loved ones. We honor them today and think of them as we sail on the waters that they fought so valiantly to defend. Reverend Fletcher, your efforts in keeping their memories alive through decades of work have no doubt made a lasting impact on the families of our fallen, and the effects of your dedication will be felt by generations to come. We wish you the best as you step back from this role and congratulate you on your stellar service. Bravo Zulu. To the cadets who are participating today and the staff at RCSCC Granville, I would also like to say thank you. Your engagement ensures that our rich heritage remains vibrant in the hearts and minds of Canadians. 
I know that this is not the format of ceremony you're used to, but being here shows your dedication to your core, to your community, and to your personal growth. Thank you for including me and for continuing this important tradition. Proclaim with me the greatness of God. Together let us extol God's holy name. The Lord shall judge between many peoples and shall decide for strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Let's join together in the responsive reading. Give thanks to the Lord who is good, whose love is everlasting. God is inside the city so that the city can never fall. At the crack of dawn, God comes to their aid, to the roaring of nations and tottering of kingdoms. When God shouts, the world disintegrates. Let us thank God for God's love, for the marvels God has done on behalf of all people, satisfying the hungry and filling the starving with good things. Come, think of God's marvels, the astounding things God has done for the world. All over the world, God puts an end to wars. God breaks the bow, snaps the spear, and gives shields to the flames. Then they called to God in their troubles, and God rescued them from their sufferings, releasing them from gloom and darkness and shattering their chains. Pause a while and know that I am God, exalted among the nations, exalted over the earth. Others, taking ships and going out to sea, were plying their business across the oceans, they too saw what God could do, what marvels on the deep. They called to God in their trouble, and God rescued them from their sufferings, reducing storms to a whisper until the waves grew quiet, bringing them glad at the calm, safe to the port they were bound for. If you are wise, you will study these things and realize how God shows us God's love. First reading, Wisdom 3, 1 to 9. But the souls of the righteous are in God's hand, and torment shall not touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to be dead. Their departure was reckoned as defeat, and their going from us disaster. 
but they are at peace. For though they may have seemed to be punished, they have a sure hope of immor immortality. And after a little chastisement, they will receive great blessings because God has tested them and found them to be worthy. Like gold in a crucible, God put them to the proof and found them acceptable like an offering burnt whole upon the altar. In the moment of God's coming to them, they will kindle into flame. Like sparks that sweep through stubble, they will be judges and rulers over the nations of the world, and the Lord shall be their king forever and ever. Those who have put their trust in God shall understand that God is true, and the faithful shall attend upon God in love. They are God's chosen, and grace and mercy shall be theirs. Brothers and sisters, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and the perishable cannot inherit what lasts forever. I will tell you something that has been a secret. We are not all going to die, but we shall be changed. This will be instantaneous. In the twinkling of an eye, when the last trumpet sounds, it will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed as well, because our perishable nature must be put on imperishability, and our mortal nature must be on immortality. Thus, when this perishable nature has put on imperishability, and this mortal nature has put on mortality, the words of the scripture will come true. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin, and sin gets its power from the law. So let us thank God for giving us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Never give in then, my brothers and sisters. Never admit defeat. Keep on working at the Lord's work always, knowing that in the Lord you cannot labor in vain. This is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 58.
Let us pray for peace. Almighty God, from whom true peace comes, open our minds and hearts to a true love of peace. Guide those who are in authority to listen well to your wisdom, to work only for justice and charity, which is the only true path to peace in the world. May your kingdom come so that the earth will be filled with your knowledge and your love and your peace. Amen. Amen. And let's continue our prayer as we pray for the Air Force. Almighty God, whose loving care encompasses even the sparrow in its flight, guide and protect, we pray, all those who fly the uncharted spaces of the sky. Bless those who, through service in the Air Force, stand guard over the sacred trust of home and country. Endow them with wisdom and understanding that they may clearly see the path of duty and courageously devote themselves in service to the nation they love. In the solitude of flight, may the beauty of your greatness be revealed to them, that they may pattern their lives in accordance with your will. Extend your strengthening presence to those who wait at home, and may they ever know your watchful care will keep safe their absent ones. Let your blessing be upon us, O God, we pray, Lead us to carry on the trust left to us by those who have given with honor their lives in service to their country. May we find peace in the knowledge of your mission accomplished and their task completed, united forever in faithful service. Amen. Amen. O eternal Lord God, who alone rulest the raging of the sea, who has compassed the waters with bounds until day and night come to an end, be pleased to receive into thy almighty and most gracious protection the persons of us, thy servants, and the fleet in which we serve. Preserve us from the dangers of the sea and from the violence of the enemy, that we may be a safeguard into our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and her dominions, and a security for such as pass upon the seas upon their lawful occasions that the inhabitants of our commonwealth may in peace and quietness serve thee, our God, and that we may return in safety to enjoy the blessings of our land with the fruits of our labor and with a thankful remembrance of thy mercies to praise and glorify thy holy name. Amen. Amen.
On the third day of September 1939, the ship Athena was top torpedoed off the, and sunk off the northern off Northern Ireland. One week later, Canada was officially at war. From that day until the last of the German U-boats surrendering in, after VD, VE Day on May 8, 1945, the Allied navies could not relax their, their, their vigilance for, for a moment. And today, the first Sunday in May, we commemorate the lives of the sailors and merchant navy, both men and women, the RCAF, the Royal Canadian Army personnel, who gave their lives in the North Atlantic, including the sinkings in the St. Lawrence River, as far down as Quebec City. <clears throat> the Royal Canadian Navy was made up of regular reserve and volunteer members from across Canada who gave their lives in the struggle. With over 2,000 dead and the loss of 24 warships, we also must remember the 24 torpedo boats that were lost while patrolling the English Channel, their crews who also gave their lives as well. The Royal Canadian Air Force, who, patrol, who patrolled the eastern seaboard of Canada, Newfoundland, as far out as Iceland, with a loss of more than 900. This day, we also must remember the Army personnel that were lost at sea as well. And today, a very few of us are left to remember the enemy that we faced was not just the undersea foe, but the cruel and unforgiving Atlantic with raging storms, packed ice, bitter cold, always being soaked to the skin, fog, and the dense blackness of the North Atlantic nights. The Royal Canadian Navy and the Merchant Navy made nearly 26,000 crossings, carrying 181 million tons of supplies to Great Britain and also to Russia. It is today and every day that the debt we owe can never be repaid if we squander the freedom they bought, brought for us through the giving of their lives. We remember our shipmates who have crossed the bar and now at rest. Freedom was made secure. Bugler, sound the last post.
On September 3, 1939, the Athenia was sunk off the coast of Northern Ireland. One week later, Canada was officially at war. From that day until the last of the German U-boats surrendered after VE Day in May 1945, the Allied navies and air forces could not relax their vigilance for a moment. Battle of the Atlantic Sunday commemorates the sacrifices of sailors, merchant seamen, RCAF, and Canadian Army personnel who gave their lives in the North Atlantic. The Royal Canadian Navy gave to the struggle over 2,000 dead and 24 warships. More than 900 RCAF and Canadian Army personnel were lost as well. The elements were often as vicious as the foe, with raging storms, pack ice, bitter cold, fog, and the dense blackness of North Atlantic nights. The RCN and the Merchant Navy made nearly 26,000 safe crossings, carrying over 181 million tons of supplies to Great Britain. Freedom was made secure. Thus, we remember. HMCS Fraser. HMCS Regina. HMCS Ottawa. HMCS Charlottetown. HMCS Brador. HMCS Albany. HMCS Marguerite. HMCS Lewisburg. HMCS Skeena. HMCS Otter. HMCS Weyburn. HMCS Schwanigan. HMCS Levi. HMCS Clayquo. HMCS Chedabugdo. HMCS St. Croix. HMCS Windflower. HMCS Trentonian. HMCS Spikenard. HMCS Athabascan. HMCS Guysboro. HMCS Raccoon. HMCS Valley Field. HMCS Esquimalt. They will not, will not be, forgotten. be forgotten. Between 1939 and 1945, over 1,700 Merchant Navy personnel lost their lives due to enemy action. The figure includes Canadian seamen who were lost while surfing aboard 278 Canadian and Allied ships. Over 70 Canadian merchant ships were sunk, most in the Battle of the Atlantic. 1940, seven ships lost. 1941, 13 ships lost. 1942, 36 ships lost. 1943, two ships lost. 1944, eight ships lost. 1945, seven ships lost. They will not be forgotten. Fifth Squadron, Eastern Air Command. Eighth Squadron, Eastern Air Command. Tenth Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 11th Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 160th Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 161st Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 162nd Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 113th Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 116th Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 117th Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 119th Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 145th Squadron, Eastern Air Command. 404th Squadron Coastal Command, 407th Squadron Coastal Command, 413th Squadron Coastal Command, 415th Squadron Coastal Command, 422nd Squadron Coastal Command, 
423rd Squadron, Coastal Command. Approximately 350 aircraft were lost and more than 900 aircrew were killed during the Battle of Atlantic. They will not be forgotten. <laughs> They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we, we shall, shall remember, remember them. them. May the God of all consolation bless you in every way and grant you peace all the days of your life. Amen. May God keep you from all misfortune and strengthen your hearts in peace. Amen. May God enrich you with the gifts of faith, hope, and love so that what you do in this life may bring you to happiness in everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. <laughs>